Hello, in this presentation, we will enter a bank reconciliation into our bookkeeping problem in Excel, keeping in mind how that same information could be input into accounting software such as QuickBooks. We will first take a quick look at QuickBooks and then jump back over to Excel and enter the data there. When considering QuickBooks, we have a feature to allow us to conduct the bank reconciliation. That starts with choosing the account. We are going to choose the checking account. And then we're going to put in the date. We're first going to reconcile the first month. So remember, we have two months worth of data now. We're going to go back and reconcile the first month and take a look at some of the problems that can happen in making adjustments in that case, if there's a problem and we need to make some adjustments for the prior month. And then we're going to have the beginning balance and the ending balance and enter that information. Once we do that, we could say continue within the QuickBooks software and it really just gives us a detail of our bank banking information, which of course is similar to our general ledger, listing out the date of the transaction, the checks for the transaction, and the amounts. We can then compare those to our actual bank statement. And all we're going to do is just check and check off these information. We're going to check off everything that's on the bank statement to what is on the books here. And everything that is similar, we're going to say has cleared by checking that information off. Everything that has not cleared then will be unchecked. And that's how QuickBooks will generate the bank reconciliation. So we'll talk more about what that is when we put this into Excel. But just note that we'll do the same for the deposit side. We're just going to say here's the QuickBooks data. And we're just checking everything off. And we're going to match that over here. This is going to be our bank statement. And we'll just tick and tie this out. This will make more sense as we do this in Excel. But it's just a quick example of what the QuickBooks looks like as you're doing this bank reconciliation. And once you have done that, we're going to identify anything that's going to be on the bank statement that is not on the books. In this case, we have these two items that were on the bank statement, not on the books. When working with QuickBooks, then we would just make the adjustment, meaning we would go into the account and actually in the check register, make an adjustment, enter the data for anything that's on the bank statement that's not on our books. And we would enter that data and then go in and check that item off. We'll do the same for any other item, the bank service charges. We'll actually go to the check register and enter that data and then go in and check that off. This will again make more sense as we work this in Excel. And then once we're done, it'll indicate that we have been reconciled and that we'll have a zero in the differences column down here on the bottom. And in essence, we will just generate, it'll generate a bank reconciliation based on that information. So in order to get a better understanding of what is actually happening and what is a bank reconciliation and how did that generate a bank reconciliation and why do we need to do that, we'll put this information into Excel. Here we are back in Excel. We are going to do the bank reconciliation for January. So remember, we're at the end of February and we didn't reconcile the bank account as of the end of January. And now we're going to do the two bank reconciliations back to back in February and talk about the pros and cons of doing something like that. What we're doing is we're going to be reconciling the bank account. And that means we're looking at the bank statement and just tying out what the bank statement has to what we have. And if you would think that if we were going to look at the same date as of, in this case, the end of January, you would think that the balance at the end of the January would match on the bank statement as to our books if everything was done correctly. But that's not going to be the case because of timing differences, meaning checks that we wrote that haven't cleared the bank and also deposits that haven't cleared the bank. Therefore, we want to reconcile those items and we want to do that for a big reason. One to check our cash account, obviously, uh, because the cash account is very important. But also by checking the cash account, because the cash account is involved in the accounts receivable cycle, within the payable cycle, within just about every cycle in the accounting process, we're really given a good check about on every cycle within the process. So, and the fact that it's being checked against a bank, which has very good bookkeeping services, and is often very accurate means that uh, it gives us a lot more verification to all accounts. So it's really our second best uh, line of defense in terms of catching any errors within the double entry accounting system other than simply the debits and credits, the double entry accounting, the balancing system itself. So we're going to go ahead and match this. What we're going to do this now, we're going to go to the bank reconciliation. It's going to be all the way to the right. We'll see a bank reconciliation. So we'll take a scroll all the way to the right looking for the bank reconciliation area. 
and we will see a bank statement that we're going to then compare to our books. So it's all the way over here in uh, the columns DW through uh, EK. So DW through EK, that's what we will be working with here. And what we have is a bank statement on this side, and then we're going to have, this is the GL account. So first, bank statement. What is it? We've all probably seen a bank statement. We're going to get it at the end of the month. It's going to come directly from the bank. This isn't something that is from our books. It's from the bank. So this is what the bank says that we have. And it will generally have a beginning balance. It's going to have the additions in summary and then any subtractions in summary and then the ending balance. This is for the month of January, the first month of operations. And then it usually gives the detail, meaning we've got deposits by date. Here's the date of the deposits. And then we have the checks here by date. And we also typically have check number and then the amounts there as well. Any other withdrawals or any other activity. In this case, we have withdrawals and bank service charges to get to our total in terms of the deductions and our total additions, which are these items here. So what we want to do is look at all this information and be able to tie it out to what we have. If we can double check everything, if we know that all these items, for example, are on our books, then we can be pretty confident that those are correct because they're also on the bank and that gives us assurance that they are okay. In order to do that, we're going to take a look at the general ledger, the activity for the banking uh, for January. So note that we are looking uh, for the month of January rather than we're, we uh, are in currently now, the month of February. And therefore, where did we get this information? Went back to the first tab. So this tab over here went all the way back to this tab, the trial balance first tab. And we picked up the this is the 94,437 at the end of January, and we're picking up the GL, all this activity, the GL that made up that 94 uh, amount right there. So that 94 is being generated from here, and all the detail is this. So this is the activity we have going back to our trial balance for, uh, for February. Here we have that. So all we did was copy and paste this over here and we're just looking at the detail now. And so all we need to do then is check off everything that happened here to here and see if it all ties out. How do we want to do that? It makes a big deal that we want to, it's important to know whether we're going from the bank statement to the books or the books to the bank statement. I would start off going from the bank statement to the books and then go the other way because when thinking about this, if it's on the bank statement and it's not on our books, it's most likely that there's an error in our books and we're going to have to fix whatever the problem is. If on the other hand, it's 